Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is great and greatly to be praised. Wonderful is our God. Mighty is our God. Awesome is our God. Amen. God bless you tonight. You can take your seats. So glad to be in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Thursday. Isn't it a beautiful evening? Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord on this evening? Mr. Gaddy, are we already on and everything is up and going good? If you would, those that are in the sanctuary, if you could, get your phone out, your item, if you could. Share our service right now. We are streaming. We welcome you that are streaming from around the world. Amen. And those that are streaming, if you would, share, start a watch party. Amen. Tonight for our Bible study. Amen. Let them know that Judah Life is live tonight. Amen. Many are in the sanctuary, but many are at home or at work. Uh, wherever you may be, just go ahead and tune in. I believe we have another great lesson from the Lord. Amen. Tonight. Amen. Amen. I hope everybody's had a great week. It's good to see everybody's face. If you would, do me a favor and smile, though, yeah, so I can see some smiles tonight. Put a smile on your face and let me know that you are all right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be in the land of the living. Glad to see our sister pastor and Amen. Minister Virgie back home safely Amen. from their trip to Dallas, Texas this weekend. Their world tour of Texas. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. Glad to see each of you in the house of the Lord on tonight. Amen. I'm just grateful to God. Y'all know I'm so glad to be alive. And I'm glad to be saved. God has given me another day to get it right. Y'all didn't just hear I said God gave me another day Amen. to get it right. Amen. The truth be told, he gave you another day to get it right. Amen. Sometimes we make mistakes along the way, but God, thank God for a day. Watch this. Every day we see brand new mercies. You only need mercy when you've done something wrong. See, God, God has sent us, God has set this thing up so that even if you make a mistake in your day, he's given you brand new mercy. Y'all, I wish somebody would praise God on that. I wish somebody would praise God right there. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. God is great. God is so good. Uh, we love him. We praise him. Um, so many things, so many challenges, so many um, things going on in the world. But I'm so glad that I'm rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. Anybody else glad to be rooted and grounded in Jesus? Amen. God bless you. If we can, let's, let's begin our part two of sheep versus goats. How many enjoyed last week sheep versus goats? Amen. I enjoyed. I enjoyed. I'm enjoying the study of goats and uh, I mean sheep. I'm studying more on sheep than I am goat. But I know enough about goats that I don't want to be a goat. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. I've learned enough about goats that I don't want to be a goat. And the one thing we know from what we read last week, if you're a goat, God's going to put you on the left hand. And then those on the left hand will be rejected. I don't want God to reject me. Amen. I wish I had somebody to help me. I don't, somebody say, I don't want God to reject me. I don't want him to reject me. I want God to be pleased with me. And I want, I want God, I want my life to bring glory to God. I want my life to please. Amen. Come on, somebody. I want my life to please God in every way. Amen. So God is great. Glad to see each of you in the house tonight. Uh, if you would turn with me to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 as we begin this lesson. Uh, those of you that are at home, make sure you tune in. Make sure you share it. Share it with a family member. Tag a family member. Uh, uh, and uh, let them know. That we text somebody. I'll, I'll even give you a minute or so to text somebody and tell them we're streaming tonight. <laughs> Let somebody know that we're streaming tonight. That's what I'm doing. If you're on your phone other than texting somebody or, or sharing, you shouldn't be on your phone tonight. Amen? Amen? Amen. Nobody unnecessarily should be on their phone playing games or anything on their phone doing service. We're in worship. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. So please... Once you've done that, unless you're using your phone for a Bible, who has their Bible tonight? Do me a favor, raise those Bibles up. Raise those Bibles. Come on, raise them up so I can see them. Raise them up. Raise them up. I see. Good, good. Raise them up. 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 Good. Amen. We did better today. 
Amen. I'm going to start doing it more because I want to know who's got their Bible. Who's, re who's reading their Bible? Amen. Outside of church. You shouldn't wait till you come to church to read your word. Amen. You should be reading your word every day. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to begin at verse 10. Just two verses there. And then we're going to go to St. Matthew chapter 24. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10 and 11. Those of us that have our Bible, let's read together in concert. Behold, the Lord God will come with what? A strong hand. And his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is what? With him and his work before him. Verse 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. That are with young. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you would turn with me to St. Matthew now. St. Matthew chapter 25. St. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. Pick up that verse 25. You read this last week, but I just want to, these are kind of our, our subject scriptures, our focus scriptures for this lesson, sheep versus goats. Uh, St. Matthew Chapter 25, beginning at verse, uh, actually begin at verse 31. Let's read verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Before him shall be gathered all nations. He shall separate them from, from one from another. As a shepherd divideth his sheep, from the, goats. From the goats. Do you notice? I want you to, it kind of leaped out to me when I was reading this, I think, yesterday. As I was studying and getting prepared for this lesson, that verse leaped out to me because notice what it says. He says, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. You catch that? His sheep from the goats. The sheep are his. The goats ain't. The goats ain't. <laughs> He's going to divide his sheep from the goats. The goats. Are y'all with me? All right. Read verse, I'll continue to read. Verse 33. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation. I want to be in that position. That's exactly right there is where I want to be. All right, read verse 35. He said, for I was hunger, uh -huh. and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, I was thirsty. and you gave me drink. Yes. I was stranger, and you took me in. Mm -hmm. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we then a hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and give thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we there thee sick, or in prison came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as you have done it unto the one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Now who's on the left hand, church? The goats are on the left. What's he going to say? Depart from me. Depart from me. He cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for his devil and his angels. God did not prepare the lake of fire for people. Amen. The lake of fire is not a place for people. The unfortunate thing is, people say, God ain't going to send me to hell. You, you're right. You're going to send yourself because of your disobedience, because of your rebellion, because of your lack of faith, because of your lack of belief, because of your lifestyle. 
you are going to be cast into the lake of fire. Created for who? The devil and in the place prepared for who? The devil. The lake of fire was not prepared for, for humankind. God didn't create man to torture them. God did not create man to abuse men, mankind. In fact, we, we're learning a lesson that God created man in his what? Likeness. His image and in his likeness. Why would I create something that wanted to destroy? Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? All right, verse 42, read. For I was a hungry, and you gave me no meal. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee, when did we see you hunger, or thirst, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? When, Lord? Verse 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as ye did not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. Verse 46. These shall go away into what? Everlasting punishment, but the righteous. Into life eternal. Anybody want life eternal? Amen. Who, who, watch this. Who in their right mind, and notice I said right mind, wants to go into the lake of fire? Who in their right mind wants to experience the second death, which is eternal damnation and eternal separation from their creator? Who in their right minds uh, uh, just says, I just want to be a goat? You have to be possessed to say, I want to be a goat. But I'm here to tell you, God has sheep and there are some goats. And I want to be one of his sheep. As we talked about the lesson, I want to make a point of something. I talked about this last week and I kind of mentioned, um, uh, why did God choose sheep? Why didn't he choose a cheetah <laughs> to, 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 to compare us? Uh, why not a wolf or why not a tiger? Or an animal with a bit of flair. Uh, uh, watch this. Animals with a bit of class. You know, they, they, they dogs are so intelligent that they train dogs to go into dogs. You, you ever watch the dog show on TV? They, they dress them up and they prance them through and they grade them. They have judges. Dogs have sense enough to act like they got some class. Uh, uh, why? Why not one of these animals? But the Bible tells us often that we are compared and that God compares us to sheep. Uh, we are a sheep and God, watch this, is our shepherd. That sheep, that shepherd word picture is at the heart of the best love psalm in the Bible. Anybody know what's the, what's the most favorite psalm in the whole world? 23. Psalm 23. Most of us, I would tend to say, especially those of us raised in the church, we can quote almost Psalms 23 verbatim. All six verses, we can quote them. It starts, the Lord my is my shepherd. I shall not. He maketh me to. He leads. He reached. Yea. I will for thy rod and thy staff, shepherd, comfort me. Thou preparest in the presence of my, thou, uh, my cup, surely. Good God, I thank God. Already I feel like shouting because that's encouraging. I done went through the valley of the shadow of death. I got enemies. But at the end, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the, I don't care what you're going through. As long as you're the sheep and he's the shepherd, he's with you. And grace and mercy has been following you all of your life. There's some people watching me tonight. You, 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 you are just being set up by God to be saved. You think you've been doing your own thing. I'm speaking, I'm prophetically speaking tonight. You've been doing your own thing. You've been going down your own path. But I can tell you right now, somebody, God is setting up. He's had grace and mercy following you all the day. You think you got yourself out of trouble. No, baby. No, man. No, sir. No, my fair lady. You didn't get yourself out of trouble.
God kept you out of trouble because goodness and mercy was following you even when you was doing stupid stuff. Hallelujah. We ought, to, we ought to take about 30 seconds, everybody. If you would, just stand on your feet if you can. Stand on your feet and take 30 seconds and bless the Lord right there. Praise him for goodness and mercy. Praise him for his rod and his path. Thank him for bringing you through the valley and the shit. Come on. I want you to like to go into a praise right now. Thank him for his goodness. He is the good shepherd and I am his sheep. I glory. Come out, son of the Lord. Man, I don't, know why, I don't know how you can contain yourself. I feel like busting loose tonight. I feel like giving God a praise. He's been my shepherd all of my life. When I thought, God, when, when I went in that club, when I was doing drugs, when I was sleeping around, he protected me. Ah, when that drug dealer sold me some bad drugs. I'm not talking about me. I'm just talking to gentlemen. When that drug dealer sold me some bad drugs, I could have lost my mind. I got a relative today. They say she lost her mind years ago because somebody possibly gave her some bad drugs. You know you took drugs, and that moment that you took it, God didn't let that drug tear you up. Ah, goodness and mercy has been following us. That gun bullet, they could have took you out. That car accident, they could have took you out. That cancer, that tried to attach itself to your body. That heart attack, that tried to take you out. Oh, but the goodness of God. Oh, but the goodness of God. If it had not been for the Lord who was... You can be seated, you belong. I can't, I can't. I can't, I don't, I, I'm telling you, I'm... When I think about how good the shepherd has been to us, I think about how faithful he is. Hallelujah, the good shepherd. The good shepherd. Why? Why a sheep? Uh, why? Why a sheep? Uh, Y'all know, Pastor, I'm just now really studying all my years of studying different things. I'm just now studying on the sheep. But I love it. Do you know that in a, in a, a sheep in his first year is a lamb? Uh, and its meat is also lamb. Isn't that interesting? A sheep in the first year is considered a lamb. And its meat is considered lamb. I don't know about y'all, but I love me some lamb. <laughs> uh, something about you. If you've never had any lamb, you need to try it. It's some delicious. It's, it, it, it don't have a bad foul taste. But if you never tasted lamb, you need to try it. It's delicious. Thank you, Jesus, for the sheep. That was a lamb. A sheep in his second year, and its meats are called hoggets. H-O-G-G-E-T. I ain't never heard of a hogget until I started studying about sheep. Uh, it sounds like a pig almost, a hogget. What is a hogget? Just give me lamb or sheep. Uh, older sheep meat is called mutton. Now, I used to see why I go to restaurants and they say mutton. i like, mutton? What is mutton? But it's the same thing as the sheep. It's the same thing as the lamb. It's just the older version of the sheep. Uh, you listen to me. God is so awesome when he compares his church to a sheep. He, he doesn't compare his children to a goat. In fact, we see in the word of God that you can't be a goat because of what goats do. Let me give you go back and give you a little history from last week about a goat. Uh, here's some characteristics about a goat. Uh, uh, don't, they don't like or they don't follow the shepherd. They don't like or they follow. They, they love to roam around. Uh, they call it browsing. They love to roam around destroying fields or gardens. They like to destroy stuff. Uh, number three, they love to make noise. Um, <laughs> they love to. Make, you know, some of the craziest people are the loudest talkers. Okay, y'all don't have to say that. Uh, number four, they love to fight headbutting. Uh, where sheep are more defenseless, you don't want to fight a goat. Because a goat will headbutt you and knock you straight out. Uh, they love to fight headbutting. Number five, goats can't be corrected. They, they are uncorrectable. Uh, 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 they can't be admonished. Uh, do y'all know anybody like that? They can't be uh, told. Uh, I, I pastored in my 15 plus years of pastoring. I pastor some goats. I pastor some people that when I try to discipline them, they headbutt. They don't want to listen. They don't want to take advice. So I understand 
uh, the spirit of a goat. Uh, never correctable. Uh, uh, never want to be told what they've done wrong. Never, never want to be corrected by the word of God. Uh, they want, they want to get out of their place. They don't want to be led by a shepherd. Then number six, and it kind of goes along with them destroying fields. Goats are destructive. Period. Dot com. They're destructive. Uh, and none of those, none of those characteristics and attributes of a goat do I want in my life. So if I mention anything and you feel like you have a little bit of the goat, goat, goatish in you, ask the Lord. Say, Lord, remove the goat from me. In fact, let's just all say it because we all may have days. <laughs> we all, even pastor, we all may have some days where we get a little goatish. Come on, y'all. Let's be honest. Uh, uh, some, everybody declare with me, Lord, remove the goat from me. I don't want it because you know what he's going to do with the goat. You know, he's going to put the goat on his left. They're going to be rejected. They're going to be cast into eternal damnation in the lake of fire. I don't want to be. I want to be on the right side to experience everlasting life. Uh, why does he characterize us? Why, why does he call us goats? I started last week on giving us the nine characteristics. Does anybody remember uh, what number one was from last week? Of uh, the characteristics of sheep now. I'm on the character number one. Yes, Mother Vivian. They have no sense of direction. They have, here's, here's three quick points, and this is going to include part of that. Here's, here's, if I was going to just preach or teach a direct sermon uh, without getting into all the characteristics of a goat, this is what I would say about a goat. Three things. They're dumb, they're directionless, and they're defenseless. They're dumb, they're directionless, and they're defenseless. Well, Pastor, why would God call us sheep if we're dumb? Well, y'all, those are with, with me last week, you understand why the scripture says or why the characteristics of a goat uh, indicates that he is dumb. Uh, they have no sense of direction. Uh, sheep have to be led. Thank you. I got about two or three. Amen. Sheep, when people, I hear people say all the time, I don't need a pastor. All I need is the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost will lead us and guide us. Under. Baby, no, God ordained pastors. I'm, I'm, I need y'all to talk to me. God, anybody tell you they don't need a pastor, they're telling you they don't need God. I'm going to say that again. That's like me growing up saying, and this is just on a natural level, that's like me growing up saying I don't need water. Or I don't need, uh, if I have a choice, if I've got a dad and a mom in the home, that's like me as a child saying, I don't need a daddy in the home. How many know we need a daddy and a mama in the home? Amen. So watch this. Sheep have no sense of direction. They need to be led. I love the Psalms 23, and we just quoted it. What did he say? He what? Leadeth. In other words, the sheep aren't leading themselves. He's leading me. And thank God he's leading me because if he don't lead me, you know what happens when sheep, sheep follow themselves. What happened? Last week we talked about the 1,500 sheep that followed the sheep, that one sheep that led them into a ravine and 400 died immediately and they cushioned the blow for the other 1,100 that fell on top of them. Do You don't know if you follow sheep, you're going to die? Sheep are not, in other words, let me, see. oh God help me. You ain't supposed to be if you got a situation, you need to talk to your pastor, not another sheep. Amen. Okay. Okay. You, 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 you. Sheep do not lead sheep. I want that to really press in. I'm going to move quick here, though. Sheep do not lead sheep. They are directionless. That's why they say they're dumb. Uh, and then it's a 50 50 chance. When a sheep goes on its own path, that he's going to make it out all right. 50-50 chance. The 50 that's good is saying he went the right direction. The other 50 says he's going into a ravine or a ditch or going to the wolf. Are you with me? That was number one. Number two, what's number two? Somebody tell me. Defenseless. Sheep are defenseless. Sheep cannot defend themselves well at all. Period. They're, they don't have defense mechanisms they don't have, and we talked about, the, they don't have, they're not like a porcupine that can shoot quails at you. They're not like a skunk that can spray stink at you. They're not like a lion that can roar. See, a lion don't really have to attack anybody. All they got to do is roar, and everybody's going their own way. 
Uh, but don't let a lion get a hold of you. They're not like a tiger or a lioness that's going to eat you. They're not like an eagle or a hawk that's on the prey. Are y'all with me? They're, they're not even a praying mantis. Praying mantis has more uh, uh, defense mechanism than a sheep does. <laughs> a little prayer. Sheep are defenseless. Uh, they are defenseless animals. Um, but we talked about the two things they have in their arsenal. Number one, when they're frightened or making noise, they run. Uh, they run and they run together. And that's the only saving, that's one of their only saving graces that they stay together. Is it important to know that God called a sheep because he meant for us to stay together? Amen. Let me say it again. Sheep, one of their best defenses, they, even though they're, they don't have good defense, is that they stay together. It's important that the church stays together. together. She kick. Y'all know they only kick from one end, so they don't, they don't help them much. That's why we need the Lord to protect us. All right? Number three. What's number three, everybody? She can't get up without help. We talked about that. Uh, they lie on their back. If they get on their backs and their four legs are sticking up, they're in trouble. Unless a shepherd gets them up. Another sheep can't even get them up. Isn't that interesting? Another sheep can't get, it takes a shepherd to get a sheep up when they're on their back flailing with their legs in the air. That's number three. Number four, sheep, go ahead, sheep or what? The sheep, my sheep know me and they know my voice. That's what God said. So when God equates us to sheep, that means we know the voice of the Lord. If you don't know the voice of the Lord, you may be a goat. <laughs> number five. Sheep are not meant to carry, but everybody agree that God don't want us carrying burdens. Amen. We're not a horse. We're not a donkey, a pony. We're, we're not a giraffe. Uh, God doesn't intend for sheep to carry burdens. Isn't that a blessing? Cast all of your burdens on the Lord, for he will sustain you. Psalm 55, 22. Here's number six. That's five. Uh, that's what we left you off on last week. Number six. Write this down. Take this note. Are you ready? Here it is. Sheep will settle for less. Sheep will settle for less. Uh, you know, settling, you know, you, you write out a plan. Here it is. Yeah, I want a man that's saved. He got to look good. He got to have a job. Uh, uh, he got to have his own place. How many points is that so far? Three, four, that's four, I think, thank you. Uh, he he got to have his own car. That's about five points. But guess what? If, if you're dumb like a sheep, you get desperate. You'll cross some of them things off the list and you'll settle for less. Well, he lived with his mama, but he got a job. He's a mama's boy. <laughs> he ain't saved, but I'm going to get him saved. <laughs> I'm going to settle Sheep settle, no sheep. This is one of the characteristics of a sheep when They settle for less They, 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 they think that they, they don't deserve Here's, Here it is When sheep are thirsty, watch this They will stop at a dirty puddle Right in front of them Instead of going for the clean Still waters 20 feet ahead of them Notice the Bible said he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path. Right? He, he, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He takes them to the still waters. He takes them away from the dirty, the polluted, the corrupted water. He takes them to still. Are y'all with me? So sheep, they would settle for the muddy water and be right close to still water. Mm -hmm. Sadly, they are content. Watch this. Sadly, they are content with filth. So long as it satisfies at the moment. Mm. Let me park there. Mm. Oh, somebody say, oh, help us, Jesus. Oh, help us, Jesus. Sheep will settle. And whatever satisfies them at the moment. Uh-oh. Who does that sound like, y'all? Who, what, what, who does that sound like? They will settle. What feel, how many of us have failed God, given over to our flesh, because we wanted to feel good for a moment. And we settled for less. We Watch this. Some of us may have missed God because we settled for dirt. Uh -oh. Some of us may have missed God because we messed with Boogie Boy 
and God had the bomb diggity waiting on us. <laughs> uh, come on. Now. Some of us may have settled for sleazy Susie instead of waiting on sanctified Sally. I'm talking about me. Don't think I'm just talking to the women in here, brothers. I'm talking to us too. Some of us settle for, for, for stuff when God's got something better for it. But because we're impatient, we don't wait on the Lord, we let our flesh dictate to us, and we settle for, for less just like sheep. God doesn't want us settling. Talk about it. Mm. Many times we see a, a dirty puddle. It's called sin in front of us. And go straight forward because we think that this is there it is in life. This is what's at. This is where it's at. This is where that we think we are saturated when in reality we are poisoned with stink. Mm. Perhaps it, that sin, that dirty water, even looks enticing at times because after all, it is water. Uh oh, y'all catch that? The dirty water is enticing to us. Because it's still water. I, I got to have her. She's dirty, but she's still water. I got to have him. He ain't saved. He's dirty. But I got to. And we settle for less when God. Don't you know you could be at the brink of your blessing and you give up because you gave in the sin and you settled for the less. God has the best for you and you settle for less. She settled for less. God compares us to sheep in the Bible because we don't always know what is good for us. Mm. Let me say that again. God compares us to sheep in the Bible because we don't always know what is good for us. Are y'all with me? You think it's good for you, but God said it's not good for you. You know, I wish, let me say this. Now, I'm not, y'all ought to know, Pastor, by now, I'm not going around trying to find out what everybody that I pastor is doing every day. Amen. I'm not. Now, if I find see something, I'm going to say something, but I'm not, I'm not one of them detective pastors. In fact, I try to avoid some of y'all's posts because I don't want to see the craziness. <laughs> now, I ain't talking about maybe somebody not here. Maybe I'm talking about somebody else. But my, my point is this. Um, um, I'm not, I, that's, that's not my job. Uh, but I wish, I, I, I said that to say this, I wish some of you all would stop getting into relationship before you talk to your pastor. Oh, it got quiet in here. You dating somebody, okay, let me just go on the natural because before I get into spiritual because some of y'all may not understand. If I deal with you from a spiritual level, you're not going to appreciate it unless I give it to you in the natural. If my daughter is in my house and some guy wants to date her, as the father, I'm going to check him out. Amen. Same with my son. My son in the house, and some we want to date some woman, I'm going to check him out. I'm going to be one of those nosy parents. Because I know better for you than what you know for yourself. I wouldn't, pay, I don't know why teenagers and young people think that their parents don't know better. Boy, y'all too quiet for me in here tonight. Children think they know better than their parents. Yeah, okay, you know how I know that? I was a child one time. The reality is, what you're going through and what you're dealing with as a young person, I've already done it. I've already done it. I've been there. I got the t-shirt. I got a degree in being a child. <laughs> Say, you too old now. I was a child before I became 54. I went through teen I went through puberty. I know what it's like to wake up on fire. See, some of y'all caught that. Some of y'all wish y'all would wake up in here. I know what it's like to be burning in my flesh. And the truth be told, you know what it's like. Don't act so sanctified that you didn't have some hot nights by yourself wishing somebody was curled up to you. Come on. Come on, tell the truth. Come on, come on. <laughs> but somehow, young people, and not all young people, young people think they know better than their parents. But the parent's job is to protect you until you become an adult. When you come, 
<laughs> my job as a parent is to keep you from being a young fool. Now, if you continue in your folly, after you get grown, if you didn't listen to me correcting you as a child, you're going to go from being a young fool to being a old fool. Parents are supposed to correct children. Amen. Amen. I wish I had some, I need some help in here tonight. It's kind of, parents are supposed to correct children. Amen. Because we see the pitfalls you're getting in because we've been there. Say it. Say it. Somebody going to date my daughter. I want to talk to him. I want to see him in the eye. I want to look him in the eyes. Say it. Say it. Say it. Now, that's his natural father. As a pastor, I stand in the role as a spiritual father. Come on, amen. Anybody want to date one of my sons or daughters, I should at least get to meet them. If I can't meet them, something's wrong with you. Amen. Say it. Say it. There it is. There it is. I'm going to say that again. If I can't meet them, something is wrong with you. Not me. You. Well, pastor, I'm 60 years old. I still need to meet him. Because, mama, you may be 60 and haunted. <laughs> After I'm grown. I put on my pants just like you. I use the restroom just like you. I don't care how grown you are. We're in the kingdom of God. God has order. Sheep can't leave themselves. If people, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm sitting here as a witness, I'm telling you, if people would have listened to me as their pastor, some of them wouldn't be in the mess they're in right now. Amen. Do I know everything? I, I ain't never act like I know everything. I know enough to tell you when you ain't going to a pit though. Come on. Come on, sir. But sheep settle. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me. Do y'all notice? The shepherd makes the sheep. I want y'all. He makes me. He didn't say he allows me. He makes me lie down in. Because the sheep will settle and slay somewhere else. The sheep, is, the sheep will be in the bed with fleas and ticks. Mm. Come on. Come on, sir. He leads me beside the still waters. Sheep will settle for that. Number seven, y'all ready? I like this one. Sheep are valuable. Sheep are valuable. Somebody say sheep are valuable. You say, why did he equate us to sheep? Because sheep are valuable. Ah. Uh, in Jesus' day, sheep were treated like prized possessions. You were counted, watch this, you were counted a wealthy man if you owned a large flock of sheep. Why? Because they provided three things. Here's what sheep provided. Meat. Mm -mm -mm. I'm telling you, you ain't never had lamb. <laughs> my, my, my. Sheep provide milk and sheep provide wool. So guess what? When it gets cold, guess when you need something soft to lay on? Sheep provide meat, milk, wool. So if you had a large uh, flock, notice I didn't say herds. The sheep aren't in herds. Only goats are in herds because they don't like the shepherd. They don't. They, they have to be in a whole separate place. Uh, watch this. And they produce, watch this, and they produce offspring. They produce offspring. They produce offspring. You know what the job of the sheep of the church is? Uh-oh. Y'all getting quiet. They produce offspring. My pastor used to say this all the time, and I didn't know what he was. I mean, I understood it, but I did He said, he said, as a job pastor, my job really ain't soul winning in the sense of going out on the streets and all that. He said, that's not my job as a pastor. He said, as an under-shepherd, my job is to study the word of God, take care of the sheep. He said, sheep beget sheep. I like So guess who's supposed to be producing fruit and bringing forth sheep and producing offspring? Sheep. They produce offspring. Shepherds uh, made many sacrifices to make sure their flocks were protected. They knew it was their livelihood, and their livelihood was at stake. Watch this. How much more precious are we as, uh, uh, than smelly sheep? 
think about this the shepherd did all he could to protect notice the scripture says in psalm 23 his rod and his staff does what comfort, comfort me not only do they comfort him but they protect him why what is a rod is not for comfort a rod is for chastisement correction thy rod and thy staff they comfort me <laughs> jesus made watch this jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us because he loved us too much or so much he died on a cross so we could live with him forever god compares us to sheep in the bible because he views us as priceless what price do you put on sheep when they provide meat milk wool and they produce all what 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 money okay here it is what would it profit a man if he would gain the world and lose his soul or what will a man give in an ex in other words that scripture is written to tell us there's nothing more valuable than your soul so when sheep produce other sheep and they produce offspring, there is no limit and no price that can be valued on the soul that another sheep wins to God. When you win somebody to God, it's priceless. Everybody in here ought to get an urgency in their spirit to win somebody. Before we hit, if the Lord tarries, before we hit 2021, everybody in this church ought to do their due diligence to win at least one person to Jesus Christ. Everybody say, me, Lord. Me, Lord. Because this price, sheep are valuable. And, and, and what they offer is, you are priceless. In other words, I love that. I know, I know we told we were dumb, defenseless, and directionless. But the good news is, you are priceless to God. There is no price on you. There's, uh, uh, he made you in his image and his likeness. Nothing on this earth is compared to you. Nothing in the world is compared to you. Nothing in the atmosphere, the stratosphere is compared to you. All the planets lined up together don't match up to you, Mother Vivian. <laughs> you can put Saturn, Venus, Pluto, Earth, all of Mars, all of those planets together, and they don't value what you value to God. You are priceless. Somebody say, I am priceless. Why you can't have the sheep? You can't settle for less. You are priceless. I'm price. You are valuable. Come on, somebody say I'm valuable. I'm valuable. When you know your worth, when you know, and I'm teaching a series on Sunday now, talking about our identity. When you know your worth, you won't settle for less. <laughs> uh, I love what John the Baptist shouted in John uh, chapter one twenty nine. He said when when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said these words. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Look at that. He called, John the Baptist called Jesus a sheep. Even the good shepherd was called a sheep, a lamb. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. I don't, I think I'm in good company. <laughs> Thank you, Minister Dewan. The Holy Ghost just reminded me. Uh, let's look at how the world, let's, let's stop for a minute and dissect how the world looks at sheep and goats. Here's the world's view. The world says, you, you willy like a sheep. You, 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 you just wandering like a sheep. Uh, they, they make sheep seem, the world, I'm talking about the world system now, the Babylonian system, the carnal system, they downplay a sheep. But they love the goats because they call all the great athletes the goats. Mm. The greatest of all time. So when, when the world hears the word goat, they like it. Mm. When the church hears the word goat, we, we say, uh-uh, don't call me the greatest of all. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, I, I, I like him as a boxer, but he, he got beside himself. Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm the greatest of all time. I can't be stopped. I'm pretty. <laughs> 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 Y'all remember, y'all, see, some of y'all too young to know, but my, Muhammad Ali was one of the greatest boxers uh, of our time. He, he talked more stuff. He would get into people's heads. See, see, this is how Satan does. He talks you out of your blessings, talk you out of your victory. He ain't got to get in a fight with you. Before he even gets in a fight, he doesn't talk you out of victory. Come on. 
Come on. That's how Muhammad Ali was. He was so cunning and so crafty. He would talk people out of victory before they got in the ring with him. And by the time they got in the ring, he would knock them out because he talked them out before they even got it. Some of us are already defeated before we get in the ring because we let Satan talk us out of our blessing. Mm. Greatest of all time, the GOAT. I'm going to tell you something right now. Don't call me the greatest of all time. Don't call me a GOAT. Call me a sheep. Call me defenseless. Call me dumb because one thing I know, I'm in good company because there's nobody greater than Jesus. And if the scriptures can call him a lamb, if the scriptures can call him a sheep, I'm in good company. <laughs> sheep are valuable. Sheep are valuable. Sheep, they, I'm going to show you how much, if the Bible compared Jesus to a lamb slain before the foundation, because on the Old Testament, if they were going to get a lamb, it had to be spotless. If they were going to, in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, when they would offer sins, sacrifices for the sins of people, they would have to get a lamb. But Minister Virgie, that lamb would have to be spotless. It couldn't bring it no blemishes, no nothing. And it had to atone for the sins of the people. Uh, very valuable. Can you imagine the sheep that they had separated? They didn't have any spot, no wrinkle, uh, nothing wrong with it, but basically a perfect sheep that they offer for a sacrifice. Well, guess what? Jesus settled the atonement question and problem and dilemma one time. He shed his blood. Now, think about how valuable this lamb was. This lamb was so valuable, he said, when I sacrifice myself, it's going to be to save the world. God, I thank you. You are valuable because you are in Christ Jesus. I'm glad to be a sheep. I'm glad to be a sheep. Number eight. What time is it? Uh, number eight. Oh, sheep cannot care for themselves when they're wounded. When sheep are wounded, they cannot care for themselves. When sheep gets a wound or a bite, they can't care for themselves like animals lick their wounds until it's healed. Do you imagine, have you seen animals that lick their wounds? Dogs. Yeah. That's amazing. They lick themselves to heal themselves. But sheep don't have that ability. Guess what? They need a shepherd to attend to their injuries. <laughs> uh, many times there would be a salve that, that they needed to put on their leg and possibly the binding of wounds. A good shepherd would look after the wound constantly. Watch this. A good shepherd would look after the wound constantly until it was healed completely. Can you imagine you got a whole herd of sheep, but one gets wounded and you're the shepherd, you have gotta intensify your, your uh, how do I say it, your care for them on another level until they get completely healed. Oh, that's very important. <laughs> that's why it's important. <laughs> I'm gonna say what I said. That's why it's important for sheep to come to church. Because you can't heal your own wounds. You need the shepherd to heal. They can't do it. I'm going to say it again. They can't do it. They need a shepherd to care, care for them. They, they use salve. I said, what is salve? I looked at that word salve. It's a curing or curative prescribed or helping to heal, growing sound, getting well, mending. Isn't it interesting that God talks about the brokenhearted? He talks about those, uh, Psalms 147 and 3, he talks about the brokenhearted and the, those that are the bandages needed for the wounds because he knows that the shepherd needs healing. I mean, the sheep need healing. The shepherd knows that the sheep cannot heal themselves. You need the shepherd we need, come on, I say, we need the shepherd. We need, we need the shepherd. Oftentimes, watch this, we are brokenhearted in need of his healing. But sometimes we won't let him touch us. Wow. Can you imagine all the people in the Bible? Not every person, every individual that came in contact with Jesus got healed. Y'all realize that? Not everybody that came in contact. There were people in Jesus' company in scriptures. 
And because of their unbelief, Jesus would be right in their presence and they wouldn't even get what they needed. Can you imagine you're wounded? I tell, this is one of the things I tell people. And I learned this early in pastor. Before I started Judah Life, I learned this one. You don't come to church enough, but then when calamity hits you, you want me to counsel you. Mm. I'll say that again. You don't even come to church to get the word of God, to get faith, because faith cometh by hearing, hearing and hearing by the, the word of God. Faith builds us up. You don't gather with the people of God. But then when calamity and crisis and an emergency hits you, you want, the first thing you want is, Pastor, I need counseling. Sister and Pastor is my witness and my wife is my witness. I will tell people now, I'm not counseling you unless you come to church. Because you are wasting my time counseling you not coming to church. Yeah, you're wounded. I understand you're wounded. I'm here to help you. But you've got to help yourself too. You got to let the shepherd do his work. Amen. Sheep don't fight against the shepherd. All right, Come on. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. I'm gonna say I want everybody. Everybody look at pastor. Everybody look up here at me. Sheep don't fight the shepherd. Only goats do. I got to fight with you to heal you. You ain't a sheep. Come on. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again. I've got to fight with you to heal you. You are not a sheep. You are a goat. God healed. The shepherd is intended. Now, don't get me wrong. God is the good shepherd. You ain't going to hear me calling myself a good shepherd. People put that term, Pastor, you a good man. I say, God is good. Because I'm a mess without him. Amen. And you a mess without him. Amen. There's only one good, and that's Jesus. And But thank God he comes to help us in our badness be good. Amen. <laughs> she cannot care for themselves when they're wounded. It's important to come to how many would admit? How many be honest? How many know, don't the word of God just do us good? Amen. Amen. Think about the times you struggled to get to church, but by the time you left, you said, I'm so glad I came. Unless it's one of them real strong rebuking messages, and you had to digest it leaving out the building. <laughs> but how many know, you can, str I'm, I'm telling you, before I got here, when I got here tonight, I was so tired. I had, I've been going to have a meeting, and I got home, and I had to, Tell my wife we leaving at this time. Go get church. Came church set up, and I was telling Dewan the whole time I was struggling. I was so tired. But the Minister Dewan said, "Pastor, you gonna be all right. I gonna give you strength." I ain't felt tired since I took the platform. I ain't been tired. I was tired before I got up here. But when I got up here and started quoting scriptures, something about the Holy Ghost, something about the Good Shepherd. When you take care of His business, He'll take care of you. Number eight, sheep cannot care for themselves when they are wounded. Number nine, this is the last point. This is not the end of the message, but this is the last point. Number nine, I'm going to give it to you next week in Jesus' name. <laughs> Come on, give a little hand praise. I'm done. It's, I didn't really step it now. I'm done. <laughs> I said, just one more, but that ain't the end of the lesson. So don't go, don't go, don't go to the end of me. How many are enjoying sheep versus goats? Come on, give God a praise. Come on, come on, give God a praise. Can you stand on your feet and give God a praise for his word? If this word is blessing you, let me ask those. If this word is blessing you, can you stand on your feet and give God some praise right now? Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Your word is blessed. Thank you for allowing us to experience the glory of your word, the favor of your word, the richness, and the purity, and the grace of your word. Thank you for your spirit that continues to lead and guide us. God, thank you because you have called us sheep, and you've called us to have the characteristics of a sheep and not a goat. God, continue to work in us your perfect will. God, we know that you're going to complete the work in us until the day of the Jesus Christ. 
God, save us. Help us to be productive as your sheep and win other sheep. Help us to bring in other offspring. God, help us to be fruitful and multiply. And God, help us to bring glory to your name and to your kingdom. Rebuke the enemy on every side. And God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise again. God bless you tonight. Those of you that are streaming, if you want to be saved, I'm going to tell you, like the Bible says, the New Testament salvation is not a sinner's prayer. The New Testament salvation is not a confession. New Testament salvation is the new birth. Marvel not that I tell you, you must be born again, born of water and spirit. How do I know that? Acts 2.38, when on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell, Peter says these words. He preaches the first message on the inaugural day of the Holy Ghost entering into men's life. He says, repent, every one of you, be baptized. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, not in titles, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of grace for the promises unto you, your children and them that are for all, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Thank God that in 2020, God is still filling people with the gift of the Holy Ghost and you can be saved. If you want more information, you can go to our website at www.judahlife.com, www.judahlife.com. We love you. God bless you. If you want to give, you can give through our website. Or you can go to Giblify at Judah Life Destiny Church. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you soon.